because Professor Wang has enough deafness, so I will uh, give the presentation instead of him. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will give the presentation uh, titled Marais, uh, a new IAM and its uh, applications. Uh, as we all know, climate change has become one of the most uh, controversial issues in multilateral interactions. So in order to get a quantitative assessment uh, on climate change as well as uh, uh, climate policies. We have to do some modeling on climate change. Uh, but uh, since climate change is not only an uh, environmental issue, so uh, the modeling on climate change also involves uh, carbon cycle, uh, economic uh, impacts, climate feedbacks, and uh, policy interventions, and uh, as well as uh, technological changes. So what are IAM, IAM or IA models? Uh, according to Northern House, uh, the models these are that uh, uh, the models that include the full range of uh, costs and uh, effects in climate change. Mm. So um, our model is uh, uh, based uh, on the dice and rice model, which originally presented by Northern House in. Uh, 1992 and 1996. And after that, Norton House have improved his models a lot, but uh, there are still some aspects we have to uh, work on. And uh, um, at the current stage, there are some key aspects in IAMs we have to work on, uh, including economic growth, uh, technological change, global trade, international finance, and uh, also the um, carbon cycle involved with involved uh, uh, ocean and the terrestrial ecosystems. Uh, here we want to take the technological change for an example. Uh, in Northern House model, um, the, the technological change the speed of the technological change in developing and developed country is almost the same. But uh, according to the uh, statistic data, we found that uh, um, the technological change in developing country is much faster than that of developed countries. Uh, so we, when we made the model on climate change, we must uh, pay uh, close attention on that, to that. Um, but uh, uh, the Technological change issue is not only uh, about uh, technologies, it's also about uh, development uh, in developing countries. Uh, without development uh, in developing countries, for example, China and India, there will be lack of ability for technological change to reduce emissions. And also, excessive emission reductions in China and India will impact the global production chain substantially. Uh, so, based on the model presented by Northern House, um, we improved the model and presented our model named uh, MARIS, Multi-Regional Dynamic Integrated Model of Climate and economic, uh, Economy with GDP Spillovers. Uh, we have developed several uh, versions of our, our model um, with different uh, uh, regional segments. There are six regions, eight regions, eight plus one regions, and uh, uh, as well as ten regions. Um, the work we introduce here is based on the eight region variants, uh, including China, the U.S., the EU, Japan, high human development countries, uh, medium human development countries, low human development countries, and uh, other developed countries. Uh, there are five components in our model, including economic system, climate system, GDP spillovers, uh, endogenous technological change, and uh, terrestrial ecosystem. Uh, now I will introduce these components in, in details. Firstly, uh, the regional economic system. 
uh, the production in our model is given by Cobb Douglas production function uh, with regional capital and uh, laborers. And the NA policy, uh, emission reduction policy, will influence the corresponding uh, regional utility. Uh, here are the equations in this module. As you can see here, the first one is for the production and the last one is for the utility. And here we want to focus on the uh, function, uh, on the equation which describes the relationship between the climate change and uh, the productivity in our model. Uh, as you can see here, the, right, uh, the, the left side of the equation is about the effective productivity. Uh, which is uh, uh, which has an uh, inverse relationship with the original uh, productivity. Mm, in other words, the the more the more the temperature change, uh, the influence uh, the more the influence will be. And also the climate uh, uh, system. Uh, firstly, we have we have to get the gross emission uh, on regional level as well as uh, the global level. And the emission will work on the carbon cycle. And finally, we can get the global temperature change. And uh, here is the module we. Uh, introduced uh, into IAM, which is uh, totally different with uh, uh, Northern House uh, dice or rice model. Uh, we introduced the GDP spillover module uh, in order to describe the um, economic interaction between countries or between regions. Uh, the GDP spillover model uh, is, uh, is firstly introduced by Darwin and Peters in 1998. The, uh, the, the left side uh, um, of uh, the left side shows the equations in this uh, uh, Mandel Fleming model. <coughs> the, uh, but the uh, original model is much more about uh, some fiscal policies, but we just uh, simplified the model into the, 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 uh, the equation in the right side. As you can see here, the GDP uh, change of uh, one one country is influenced by the GDP change from other countries. So based uh, on some statistic uh, data, so we estimate uh, the uh, parameters in this model. Uh, here the table gives the results. Uh, and uh, we can see that the US and China promote most countries' economy, uh, reflecting the importance of keeping economic uh, growth in China and the US in world uh, development. Uh, <coughs> and so um, the endogenous technological change, uh, we introduced the learning by doing mechanism into the IAM model. Through learning by doing, costs for energy production investment and energy maintenance reduce. Here are the equations in this module. Uh, so finally, we have this overview on the uh, relationships between parameters or variables of our Marais model. And we uh, develop the model into a software system. Here are the system interface. It's the main interface <coughs> and also some um, interface um, which users can input their uh, policy scenarios. And it, it, this interface shows the uh, assessment results of, of uh, any policy scenarios and also the data view. So based on the system we developed, uh, um, we also work on applications uh, about uh, climate policy assessment. Uh, here we want to introduce uh, three applications, um, including convergence in accumulated carbon emission per capita 
and uh, convergence in carbon emission per capita and the scheme with global economic uh, growth. Firstly, scheme zero uh, named the uh, convergence in accumulated carbon emission per capita. In order to uh, reach this target, we implement uh, the strategy as following. The US, Japan, the EU, and the uh, ODC cut uh, emissions 80% uh, by 2015, uh, 50 on uh, 1990 level. The HHDC cut 50% uh, uh, by 2050 on 1990 level. All the above uh, regions keep the total emissions of 2050 by the, by the end of this century, and no emission reduction in developing country. And uh, based on the strategy we mentioned above, uh, we found that uh, uh, the accumulated carbon emissions per capita by the end of century in scheme zero is shown in this figure. As we can find that even developed countries don't uh, uh, participate in emission reduction, the accumulative per capita carbon emissions of developed countries are still significantly higher than those of uh, developing countries. Uh, though greater reductions have been taken in developed countries. And uh, also based uh, on Marais uh, model and also the system, we get uh, the temperature change uh, uh, under this uh, uh, scheme. Uh, we found that the temperature rise in scheme zero uh, will be 2.35 uh, uh, degrees by 2100. And uh, the uh, carbon dioxide equivalent uh, uh, by 2050 is about 500 uh, uh, Six ppm. So as we can see, uh, in scheme zero, the temperature uh, by the, um, in 2100 can't be controlled uh, within two degree. So here comes uh, scheme one, uh, which uh, with the principal convergence in carbon emissions per capita. So. Um, in order to reach this target, we have the strategies uh, as following. All countries start to cut emissions in 2020. China cut emissions 18% uh, and 15% on 2005 level by 2050 and, uh, <coughs> and 2100 respectively. The US, Japan, the EU, and the ODC cut emissions 82%, 50, uh, 5%, uh, 67%, and uh, 71% on 1990 level by um, 2050, respectively. HHDC cut emissions 50% on 1990 level uh, by 2050. And the MHDC keep equivalent uh, with uh, 2005 level, and the low developed countries don't participate in emission reduction. So based on scheme one, we can get the carbon emissions per capita uh, as shown in this figure. Uh, so the carbon emission per capita in each country are almost uh, equal to uh, 0 0.78 ton carbon in, uh, in the end of this century. And also based uh, on the Marais model, we get the global temperature rise uh, by the end of this century is 1.97 uh, uh, degree. And the CO2 uh, concentration um, by 2050 is about 452 ppm. And also we get the uh, utility of each country. Uh, and as we can find this, uh, in this uh, left figure, we can find that uh, uh, in scheme one, the, the utility in 2050 and also in 2100 uh, in developing countries uh, is much higher than that of developing countries. Uh, but uh, the change of uh, the utility in this scheme one is much better, as you can see that uh, uh, the change or the change of utility in developing country is almost uh, uh, positive. But uh, uh, 
the change in developed country maybe uh, some is uh, uh, negative. And finally, we want to introduce the scheme two, uh, scheme with uh, the global economic growth. Uh, in this scheme, we have the strategies uh, that China starts emission reduction from <coughs> 2030 and reduce emissions 15% uh, by 2050 on 2005 level and reduce 25% and reduce by uh, the end of the century on 2005 level. All developed countries and HD, HHDC start emission reduction from 2020. <coughs> the U.S. reduced 8% by 2050 on 1990 level and keeps the same by the end of this century. The EU and ODC reduced 8% by 2050 on 1990 level and keeps the same by, uh, by the end of the century. Japan reduced uh, 70% by 2050 on 1990 level and keeps the same by 2100. MHDC uh, <coughs> peak by 2020 will emission intensity reduction and keep the same by, uh, by the end of century. HLDC don't particip participate uh, in any reduction. So with this scheme, we can find that the carbon emission per capita uh, is shown in this figure, <coughs> in the left figure. As we can see that uh, uh, the carbon emission per capita in China and the US is relatively higher than other regions. Uh, this can ensure the uh, economic development in China and uh, the US uh, because uh, as we found that uh, China and the US is uh, the most, uh, um, the most uh, important uh, components of the global econom economy. And also we get the accumulated carbon emission per capita uh, by 2100 in scheme two. And based on the Marais model, we get the uh, CO2 concentration by 2050 is about 409.5 ppm. And the global temperature rise by the end of the century is about 1.95 degree. So scheme two can control the uh, temperature rise of this century within two degrees. And also we, can, uh, we get the uh, utility per capita and uh, uh, the rate of change of utility. Um, it's somewhat somehow uh, similar with scheme one. So, uh, and we can see that scheme one and scheme two also can uh, control the temperature rise within two degrees. So we want to compare these two schemes to see which one is better. And uh, firstly, we compared the global carbon emissions in scheme one and scheme two. Uh, and we found that uh, the global carbon emission by 2100 are 5.96 uh, GTC and uh, 4.26 uh, uh, GTC in scheme one and scheme two, respectively. And the accumulated carbon emission drop, uh, dropped to 400 and the 48.8 uh, TDC uh, from 471.1 TDC uh, in scheme one and scheme two. So we can see that in scheme two, uh, the global emission is, uh, uh, is less. Uh, and also we compared the GDP, uh, the global GDP in scheme one and scheme two. Uh, and we found that uh, the GDP in the two schemes is almost uh, overlapped, meaning the same growth trend uh, of GDP in the future. Um, but scheme two, uh, the, the accumulated GDP and, and the utility in scheme two uh, is a little bit higher than that in scheme one. And the scheme two gets more emission reduction and less temperature rise. Uh, so we, we, we can find that uh, uh, scheme two is much more uh, economic efficient than scheme one. So um, we want to give the conclusions. 
uh, in terms of modeling on climate change, uh, there are many aspects we have to improve in the future. Uh, for example, technological change, uh, economic uh, interactions, and as well as uh, carbon cycles. Uh, and when making <coughs> When making uh, mitigation schemes, uh, we should pay close attention to the developments in developing countries. So we have to adhere to the principle of common but uh, differentiated responsibility. Uh, thanks for your attention.